when did you make up your mind to join the para sf and who or what specific events inspired you to become a part of the sf you already touched upon it you were having difficulties in your i told you to team guards <laughs> see uh, like uh, already covered nehru self and couple of other people we participated in the para medal because i think that was mandatory to apply for uh, opt for uh, your arms uh, in ima so and we had only two vacancies nehru if i'm right yeah yeah two vacancies only there yeah, two vacancies hey, nagesh rao ko mila tyagi ko mila ha huh. so and they also ami has this lovely way of you know selecting people they'll select somebody who's high in the merit and to balance out they'll also select somebody who's not too high i won't say low but not too high he was from our company tyagi so nagesh rao was i think uh, one of the four runners is sword of honor also both of both are you the sword sword of honor <clears throat> so the sword of honor joined so we were nowhere around in the merit to catch up with him but we all had hopes that the second vacancy because it will be from a lower merit that we might you know just hit the jackpot but unfortunately that didn't happen so paras was there in the mind during the academy but then it came to the fore after i got into trouble uh, as a youngster young officer and uh, that was the only way out to get out of that trouble was to volunteer for the para sf so it is uh, the inspiration came from getting into trouble and seeing, <laughs> and seeing that the future doesn't look too bright out there so that prompted me very very bright sagar has a question how was the probation period and some of the memorable experiences of your probation period this is something of great interest to most people okay your so, probation is an interesting thing see uh, there are Uh, two things uh, that you people uh, should be aware of one is uh, in the parachute regiment which is airborne the probation at that time used to be for just one month while in the para sf battalions or the para commando battalions is what it was when i joined it was for three months now there are certain uh, unwritten uh, paradigms uh, in a para sf battalion one is that you have to pass the probation all the tests uh, formal tests which are there they look at how you have intermingled and interacted with the men during those three months and the final decision that is taken if any officer vetoes the decision that say there are 20 officers in the battalion and if 19 say yes he can be selected and if even one the junior mo says that no then normally you will not be selected so that is the kind of they look you know the cohesion or the uh, camaraderie that they want in the battalion they don't want that you know somebody is not uh, satisfied with your performance and they honor that of course uh, there are exceptions to that and i was one of the exceptions in that so the probation is good and uh, let me tell you uh, para commandos or para sf does not look for macho people you know the uh, definition of macho as we see today or what i see the present generation thinking that he should be very well built six packs super fit and stuff like that that is not what those people are looking at they are only looking at your mental resilience if you can take the stress for 3 months day in and day out you most likely will make it unless you have uh, you know a solid aberration and they are very very calm about putting you into stress they do it without emotions they do it with a with absolute poker face so you will probably be having a very good party in the mess you drinking and singing and doing everything and next you will know is at 4 o'clock you have been told that there is going to be a 20 kilometers march with all your equipment so they 
tend to keep you under stress and they're only seeing the mental stress part of it. That is from the physical side, uh, from this uh, resilient side. And then they see your relationship, how you mix around with the men, the JCOs and the officers during that three month period. Any incident, to... any incident, any incident? So incident, let me tell you that the kind of stress they put you into, there used to be something known as a sewage pit test. You made to stand in a sewage pit for a number of hours and you are not supposed to move your hands, legs, face. You can only blink, that's about all. And you know, open sewage pit, it attracts a lot of mosquitoes, it attracts a lot of flies and this and that, and they're all sitting on the uh, waist and onto you. So that is basically to see, you know, they test you whether you're capable of operating in extreme environments without losing your cool, without your losing your head and also maintaining your calm and posture. I remember that uh, my 40 kilometer was held in Bikaner and this was in the month of <coughs> I think February uh, and uh, so normally what happens during a 40 kilometer run is that your probation officer is there. In my case, it was now retired vice chief General Bhardwaj. And uh, so we started off the run at somewhere around 4.30 in the evening because that's the time it gets slightly cool. And it's a six hour uh, window that you have. And uh, I remember that one of the first guys who paces you, an officer. So he paced me at such a pace that I had covered 14 kilometers in one hour and 15 or 20 minutes. Now that is considering deserts, you know, with your 20, 21 kilometers of load, that was it. and. At those 14 kilometers, I just fell like a log, tuck, and blanked out. So anyway, people came and they threw water on me and somebody gave me some, you know, oranges or something to just get my salts back. And uh, must have taken me about five to seven minutes. And then I was asked, although the doctor, RMO, told, okay, sir, he's dehydrated because... He's covered this distance in such short time. So I don't recommend that he uh, continues medically. So then the probation officer landed about there and he says, uh, yeah, Andy, what do you want to do? So I told him, sir, I'll continue. So I continued despite that fall and completed the thing within the stipulated time. But the good thing is that my buddy who's not supposed to be there, he thereafter ran the complete 40 kilometers following me. And he told the probation officer, at that time he was a 2IC, he said, Saab ji, aap rene do, main saab ko nahi chodunga, aap So that is the time you get that, you know, feeling that there are people who are there to uh, always look after you and help you, even in times of adversity. And uh, that is the last test, physical test that takes place. And uh, when the voting was held, whether I was to be selected or not selected, the officer who would uh, led me in the first thing, he vetoed. He says, uh, sir, not fit. He fell down. Anyway, that was a decision he took and uh, the others had uh, given their uh, answers in affirmative. And so the CEO called the Subhda Major and uh, he told him that Saab uh, is not been, is not selected because one officer has put his foot down and so and so. And you will be surprised for four hours the officers and the Subhda Major were locked up in the mess. I was in my tent in Nal. 
and thereafter, of course, they play a prank with you. But thereafter, I was told that the Subhajar Major put his foot down. That you can let the other officer go, but this <laughs> officer. Good. So, because I had built up such a rapport with the troops out there, with my team and the others in the battalion, that I was lucky to have gone through that. Anyway, no rancor, that officer did pretty well after that. And uh, I also managed to survive 21 years in the army. But uh, I'm just telling that this is the kind of, you know, how you react, how you interact with the people at whatever stage is what makes a difference in life. Uh,